did is I went to one of the most obscure places in the Clear Act. I had read the entire document multiple times. I could feel it, I could sense it, couldn't find it. So then I start over. I went to this area right here, section 106, and here it is. It was as clear as the nose on my face was very clear. References relating to the service in statutes. Executive orders, rules, regulations, and directives, or delegations of authority that precede the effective date of this act are deemed to refer as appropriate to the department, to its officers, employees, or agents, or to its corresponding organizational units or functions. A lot of wordage there. What's really important here to look at is executive orders that precede the effective date are deemed to refer as appropriate. Obama's executive order preceded the date of the pending senatorial vote making it appropriate. And as a matter of fact, they were smart enough, as I showed you on the second slide, to get the executive order in before 11 days before the House voted on it. So there's no controversy there either. It preceded both the House vote and the Senate vote. Next slide, please. Here we go. The CLEAR Act develops, and this is very important too, very important. The CLEAR Act is what the CLEAR Act develops the Outer Continental Shelf Council. But the previous executive order states that it takes precedence over national policy, making the Outer Continental Shelf Council new. That this document, the National Ocean Council directives, take precedence over all other councils. I'm going to say this right now, but I'm going to get tongue tied. I'm going to say this right now, but I'm going to repeat it in the next slide anyway. The National Ocean Council that is created here is ratified here by the executive order, as we saw in the previous slide. This says that it takes precedence over all national policy and all other councils. So by voting for this, we're voting for this. Next slide. Here we go. By voting to accept the CLEAR Act, you establish the regional council. But hidden in this is the National Ocean Council that is established by this. The National Ocean Council is prominent and calls for a session to the Law of the Sea Treaty, as we saw earlier. It's right here. So what this means is, by soft legislation, by soft legislation, the treaty could be thrust upon the American people without a two-thirds vote of the Senate. And this is absolutely in direct violation of our United States Constitution. No question about it, folks. If the CLEAR Act passes, this could be part of the law. We could own the Law of the Sea Treaty as soon as the Senate comes back into session. Next slide. OK. And this is the last one. I'm sure you're glad you actually have had the problems spinning right now. All of our oceans, streams, and great lakes, all of the airspace above them, minerals below them, oil, gas, whatever, all life in these waterways, our fishing boats, and all adjacent land masses. We could be sitting in one right now because they're very vague as to how far those land masses are. No longer, if the Law of the Sea Treaty goes into effect, no longer come under the jurisdiction of the United States. They come under the jurisdiction of the United Nations. Make no mistake. Next slide. I think I have one more. Yes. If this goes into place, I'm through now. If this goes into place, if the Senate ratifies the CLEAR Act, you get the National Ocean Council, which gives you the Law of the Sea Treaty. And make no mistake, Obama, Biden, Clintons, they've been after this for a long, long, long time. And now they've got the support to do it. There's only one way to stop it. And I, I really highly, highly want you to go to my website, because I will have these documents, at least ways to get to these documents so you can see them. You must call your senators, and you must tell them not to vote for the CLEAR Act. Nelson is already going to vote for it right now, unless you can change his mind. Lemieux, I don't know where he stands. But it's not enough just to call your senators, folks. You need to call people out of the state. You need to get them to call their senators. If you don't realize how close we are. This is a bipartisan issue. There's people on both sides of the aisle that are in favor of this for their own reasons. Not very many good reasons, but they're in favor for their own reasons. 
What I like to do is call everybody you can, try to muster support, and if you don't believe what I told you, all these documents are there. They're easily found, and I will have these up by Friday somewhere on my website where you can go get them. And I think we'll stop right there.